In this video, we will look at migration patterns. I've taken data from the UN that shows how many people in each country that were born elsewhere. Each flag ball in the video represents 100,000 people rounded to the nearest full 100,000. For example, when two balls move from Finland to Sweden, it means that about 200,000 people born in Finland lived in Sweden in 2020 when the data was collected. These flows can reveal a lot about politics and history. Most of the time people move to neighboring countries, but there are exceptions. Here we can see people move from Suriname, a former Dutch colony, to the Netherlands. The sender countries appear in the video in the order of how many people have emigrated. The further we go, the larger flows we will see. But keep in mind that only flows of at least 100,000 people are included in the video. After a while we can see which the big receiving countries are. The United States already have collected 12 balls, more than a million people, and Germany is getting really crowded. Sadly, many people emigrate not of choice, but because they are forced to. As we progress through the video, we'll find many countries ravaged by war. Lebanon, which saw a gruesome 15 year civil war from the 70s to the 90s, is one such example. Serbia is another. It is of course easier to move to countries where you already know the language. We can see it clearly for South Africa, from which people have moved to Australia, the UK and the United States. One of them was Elon Musk. That language connection is also one way in which the colonial past continues to affect countries today. In videos I have done on search patterns, former French colonies in Africa search for France, while former British colonies search for the UK. You can even see it in search interest for football teams. Francophone countries are more interested in Paris Saint-Germain and English-speaking countries are more interested in Manchester United. If we take stock of where we are so far, we can see that the main destinations seem to be the United States, Europe and in South America, Argentina. Argentina is the third most populous country in South America, but the second largest Spanish-speaking country and it's, it is richer than Colombia, the largest. From the comments on the search videos, I also learned that Brazil, even though it is the largest country in South America, belongs to a different cultural sphere, so to speak, since the language separates it from its neighbors. Instead, Brazil has a surprising connection to Japan, which I learned about when making this video. Overall, there is so much going on here, and I have only commented on a few things that stood out. But please, do leave a comment and tell me what you thought was most interesting and what deserves to be mentioned. I have learned a lot from comments on my previous videos. Please keep it up. Uh, it's, I think it really elevates the videos to see the discussion and get the sort of context and local knowledge from people all over the world. And if you enjoy these videos, also consider subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot to me. We can now also see a new hotspot emerging, the Arabian Peninsula. These countries attract a lot of migrant workers and there is more to come later on in the video. I also want to come at Romania, it really stood out to me. For a medium sized country it is losing a lot of people, to the point the population is actually shrinking. We are now getting close to the final 10. The common denominator here is that they are all big countries with various hardships. At number 10 and 8 we have Afghanistan and Ukraine who both have been in a uh, war for a long period of time. At 7 and 6 we have Pakistan and Bangladesh which are huge countries with uh, much poverty. Number 5 is Syria from which millions fled during the civil war. At number 4 is China, the world's most populous country and on place 3 is Russia, another huge country with a shrinking population. At 2 we have Mexico which is really interesting because it has huge emigration but it's almost all to one country, the United States. And on first place we have India, the second most populous country in the world with huge emigration to the United States and the Middle East. That is all I have for today, thanks for watching.